Hi folks, Will at LR Workshop. I've just watched Mike's video about uh, coolant, a coolant level switch on um, to put in 300 DDI header tank. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally make a video like this, but um, I just wanted to talk about an alternative um, kind of coolant, low coolant alarm system, because I've got a different. I've got the I've got the Range Rover cap with the with the relay I involved, and I chose that for a very specific reason. So I just really wanted to put forward an alternative, because from my point of view, the 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 float switch that activates when the coolant level drops, it's from my point of view, it's too simple. How can something be too simple? Well, so the 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 problem for me is that the coolant level the coolant level alarm is about warning you when there is a kind of an out of range, you know, there's something wrong. And those kind of systems, I would want to be fault tolerant. Now fault tolerant mean, fault tolerance means if there's a problem in the system, you will get the same warning as if there is a problem in the thing that is monitoring. So what that means for the simple level switch is there is no difference between the coolant level being at the correct level in the terms of the system, there's no difference between the coolant level being correct and the system totally failing. In terms of, I mean, we talk about wiring here. This is what we're really talking about. If, for example, there's corrosion in the connectors or the wiring breaks, or you forget to plug the thing back in if you've taken the coolant header tank off for whatever reason, there is no difference between that and the coolant level being at the right level in terms of what the system tells you. So when I chose what I want, my system, the low coolant alarm has been on for about 11 years now. No, since 2011, nine years. Um, that wasn't something that I wanted in a low, low coolant alarm. Um, I wanted something that was fault tolerant. <clears throat> so what this system does basically, it flips the logic around. Whereas the simple, the simplest solution is when the level drops, the system activates. With this system, the, the warning is always activated, but the correct level of coolant holds the system off. From my point of view, that's what I wanted from a coolant alarm in a 300 TDI, because it's a, it's a real problem. I've known it happen on vehicles. It's very easy to happen in a 300 TDI. And I've talked about this in 300 TDI weaknesses. So it's something I wanted the system to do is to be fault tolerant. And that's basically how it works. It keeps it the the the, the the warning you would get from the system either means there's low coolant or there's a problem with the system. Now, some people would have the simple system and they, they're aware of this. So the, the switch go, the, le the level goes down, the switch comes on. Some people are aware there could be a, a fault there. So they, they wire in a self test button. So a button on the dashboard, you can press it and it activates the buzzer or the warning light. The things with that for me are that Firstly, it relies on you remembering to do that and how often you're going to do that. The second thing is, if that's wired up as an alternate power source to the buzzer or the alarm, you're just testing that the, the, the buzzer or the light works. You're not testing the whole system. You're bypassing the entire system when you press the, the buzzer. What this one does with the relay is that the entire system is running. And if any part of the system goes wrong, the warning light comes on because the warning lights always wants to be on. It's just the system activating the system in its normal state holds the holds the the warning light off. So if I forget to put the wiring back on, if I've taken the header tank off, I'll get the warning. You know, if there's a break in the wiring, if there's a bit of a dodgy connection. Now I get this from my horn quite a lot. The horn stopped working because it's out there in the front of the radiator getting all the salt spray in the the, there's a corrosion in the connectors and I have to crimp it down a bit more. It vibrates a bit loose. My horn stops working, but I know because I use my horn every now and then. If that was going to happen in the low coolant level, it would, you know, because we're talking about if someone's going to fit a low coolant alarm, they're not really thinking about the next six months. You want it to work over the next five years. This sort of stuff could occur and you don't want it to fail at the moment when you need it the most, because if it failed and you didn't know, and then you did get a, a coolant leak, it was just totally pointless. In, in anything, it made it may, may have made things worse because you may be complacent by thinking I've got a low coolant alarm, 
I won't check my coolant. And there may be more catastrophic things result from that. So, so what I really like about this system is, and I'm not taking credit for this at all, because I took, I found this on a website that doesn't exist anymore, but there's still a copy on my website if you're interested. Um, is that there's a few things. So it, it you know, it, it operates as a low coolant alarm. If there's a fault in the system, uh, so if I disconnect the wire now, it will come on. For example, if there's a fault in the system, it will let me know. And the third thing is, it's also got a self-test built in because in the period when I turn on the ignition, there's a, there's a period of time where the light comes on because it normally wants to be on. The system has to energize through the switch and then turn the relay, and that's a mechanical switch. There's a delay there where basically the, 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 it shows me the light works and then the system operating normally turns it off. It's a bit of a normal, you know, quite a quick flicker, but that's just become normal for me. So the system does what it's supposed to do. It's, it tells me it comes on when there's a problem so I can investigate and I get a self test every time I turn on the vehicle. For me, that's just amazing. For me, that's the ultimate simplicity. That's exactly what I want from a coolant, a low coolant uh, warning system. It's got a few more components in there. I'll give you that. You've got to do a bit of soldering. There's a bit of you know wiring involved, but it's exactly what I want. And I, I've had this on the vehicle for nine years. And where it helps is that um, when my coolant level drops about a centimeter over about six months, so I can tell when the coolant level is actually starting to get lower, because when I do heavy braking, or I'm uh, going down hills and braking slightly, or the coolant sloshes to the front, and then uh, the thing that, you know will switch on and off as the coolant's sloshing forward to backwards. So it's kind of there, and I know it's working. And um, I kind of wondered if it was going to fail at some point in, in the nine years because of my soldering or whatever, but it hasn't. It's been it's been great. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to put that forward really as an alternative solution. I mean, if you really want to go simple, simple, and you just want it there and, and you're happy with its limitations and what it, it may give you a bit of an extra chance at, uh, at, at detecting low coolant in your vehicle, then, you know, by all means, use mics. I just wanted to pr propose this as an alternative because that, for my opinion, I, that that type of system wouldn't be adequate for what I would, would want it to do. But bear in mind, I design systems for a living, so my job is to not vehicle systems, but my job is to kind of pick apart, find the fault in, you know, all the failure modes and stuff. So that's just normal for me. Uh, so there we go. So that was just a small video. I didn't know. I just wanted to put that forward, really. But anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.